you thought I'd forgotten about you, didn't you? Well, hey guys and gals. It's been a while, huh? It's been a couple of years. I've uh, been in a pretty nice retirement, and yet I still keep running into people that remember this tiny little channel. And to you, I'm greatly appreciative. It's, uh, it's been a while, and I've enjoyed uh, <laughs> being fully wrapped up in corporate America and uh, living the life of a working adult. And it's, uh, it's been a good journey, but I would be lying if I said I didn't really miss this. I do miss this a bit, and uh, the community that we built on this channel is still very dear to me. And I think I mentioned this in previous videos, it uh, helped me get through some pretty tough times in my life. So this video is for anybody that remembers that I ever existed. I appreciate you. I still get random comments from people and I uh, honestly am stunned that any of you ever really watched this channel. But hey, I, uh, I'm still very much alive <laughs> and everything is honestly pretty fine. And I've been through a lot of watches since we last spoke, but uh, I've been uh, kind of keeping to myself and doing my job, but hey, Maybe it's time to come out of retirement. I don't know, but I'm very grateful to be part of a local watch community where I am now. And uh, the Atlanta Watch Society and Giancarlo Roselli and a bunch of folks associated with that have been uh, very kind to me, helping me uh, stay very much addicted to this hobby. And so, hey, to all of those that have always been so supportive of me and have been wondering what's going on, everything's fine. It legitimately is. I uh, see that YouTube has gone crazy since I left. When I was on here, I was one of the first, and uh, now there's, I can't get over the dozens and dozens and dozens of watch channels that do it better ever than I ever did myself. The level of like quality and like produ professional production is just ridiculous to me. Quite honestly, I think it's really lost its sense of purpose. I, I like the flashiness of these newer channels, but it just seems so, materialistic and superficial and markety and I quit a couple years ago when I saw some of these new channels starting where they just had so much money behind them and they were just kind of paying their way for views and uh, you know whatever floats your boat they make some great content but uh, I'm here just because I like watches and I appreciate that you're all been along for the ride really appreciate that support so I figured I'd come in I'd say hi hope you're all doing really well Maybe I'll throw a couple more videos out there. I'm getting a lot of access to watches again, thanks to some very uh, successful friends that I've been keeping that collect watches like I uh, would love to collect cars. And they, they collect some very, very, very nice watches. Uh, but, you know, look, I uh, figured I'd give you a quick update. State of the collection, all that is, <laughs> I've lost track how many watches have come and gone in the last couple of years, but I will say this. Uh, the favorite watch that I've owned in my entire collection thus far is honestly a bit surprising to me and I'm wearing it right now. And it's my 16622 Rolex Yachtmaster. Right now I have it on this uh, aftermarket cell cloth strap. If you uh, have been following this channel for a very long time, you'll remember when I actually started talking about these. It's, I don't remember, it's been like 10 years. Uh, but the thing about this watch is it's just, it's such a stealth thing. You know, I remember being afraid to buy one of these things for years because quite honestly, they just were very much overlooked and everybody was gravitating towards the Submariner. Those of you who know a little bit of Rolex history know this watch actually was supposed to supersede or replace the Submariner and it never really did. It's kind of like the Porsche 928 replacing the 911. The thing that's crazy to me though is that this watch to me between us is actually better than a Sub in my personal opinion. So. These things consistently tend to be less money than an equivalent Submariner, and what a lot of people don't realize is actually the bezel on this thing and the dial is platinum. So you're not just getting a stainless steel watch, you're getting a watch with platinum on it. It has a thinner profile, it wears so much more comfortable on the wrist. It has the same old school 3135, 28,000 uh, beat movement. Super reliable. I've heard some of the newer Rolex movements have amplitude issues. These ones are ancient that came out, I want to say like 87, 88. And so anybody that knows anything about these movements know they just kind of run forever. And this watch to me is just one of those watches that is just so overlooked and I love an underdog story. I have been through 50, 60, 70 watches at this point. I honestly can't even remember. And I'm a little embarrassed to find out. But this one I've, I've stuck with and it gets wrist time more than a lot of my nicer pieces at this point because it's just so comfortable and it's just so stealthy and nobody really notices it. 
and the people that do notice it are people that really like watches. So that's kind of my little stock tip for you all. If you're uh, frustrated with the Rolex ADs these days, which I think they kind of suck, um, good luck walking into a Rolex AD and getting any sort of a watch. I feel like right now I'm on currently two different wait lists for over two or three years, and my guess is I'm never gonna get called because the people I know that get called are ones that spend a couple hundred thousand dollars a year in the stores. So unless you have a really good friend who tends to blow money in the stores, Rolex seems to forget about people like us. Fortunately for us, we have, we have buys in the vintage market, and this is one of those watches just like my Explore 2 Polar, which I've had for, I don't even know at this point, since 2016. They've kind of come up in price, they've gone down a bit all over the place, but my love for them has never faded, and there's a lot of watches that are selling for a lot more money from the Rolex line that I quite frankly just don't understand. So, anyway, I highly recommend if you've interested in one of these watches, they just, they've exceeded every expectation I've ever had for them. They just look so nice. The pictures don't do these things justice. This thing just looks, I don't explain it. The way the light catches it, if you get a little bit of sunlight on the dial, it pops. It's just very classy. I remember back in the late 90s, early 2000s, like Brad Pitt used to wear them. They had like a bit of a thing in Hollywood that's long since passed, but just an awesome, awesome watch. Anyway, I tend to get long-winded on these things and ramble. I know you like shorter videos these days, and maybe I'll show up again. Maybe I won't. We'll see. But hey, just wanted to pop in, say hi. I appreciate you all that still watch these videos. I, uh, you never know when I might show up again someday and actually might make an effort next time. But uh, hope you're all well. Thanks so much for paying and attention to these videos, and uh, maybe I'll catch you around the block. Later.